Thank you. So yeah, obviously the Herbert School of Communication, of which I am a faculty member, I've, I've been teaching at the Herbert School since 1998 uh, in the audio radio program within the radio, television, film department, but also now I am, along with being professor, I am the vice dean of the Herbert School of Communication, and I'm and we're always eager to outreach, do outreach, and communicate to especially local students who might be considering Hofstra and, and the Herbert School as a potential place to study communication, and in this case, radio. And being that I'm a radio person through and through, uh, I'm enthusiastic to uh, share my thoughts about radio. Um, again, some of my background, um, I, when I was, uh, you know, I studied my I have two degrees from New York University as a, uh, in journalism and political science and in critical cultural studies. Um, I was always involved in radio from the very beginning of my college career uh, at, at WNYU, but I, I worked at uh, a number of network stations as a production assistant, eventually at the 1010 Winds as a production assistant, writer, and then eventually as a reporter. And then I gravitated towards non-commercial public radio and community radio, uh, where I worked at WBAI, I worked at Pacifica Radio, I worked with WNYC um, as, a, as a guest host on several programs. And I used to serve as a correspondent for, w, uh, for NPR's Latino USA, which is a weekly half-hour radio magazine that's still on the air. It airs on about 400, 500 stations nationwide. Obviously, now the world is different. That was a long time ago. Now, with podcasts and with internet and with social media, these programs, these programs get in, and and have many different acts. You know, many other ways of distributing and getting programming out. Uh, but for the last, you know, I guess you know, good good chunk of time, I've been working here at Hofstra, and uh, joining now with us is uh, Dwalisa Kautau, who's a uh, longtime radio reporter, journalist, uh, who is also now on the staff here at Hofstra at WRHU. Uh, so uh, she's been busy all day, and uh, she was kind enough to join us uh, to give us some insights as well into the into the um, radio world uh, and also to kind of talk about the academic program. Duahli is, and I'll let Duahli obviously introduce herself, but um, Duahli is uh, currently... She is the professional in residence at WRHU, which is our uh, university uh, run, student run, uh, community licensee, uh, FM broadcasting outlet, the radio station WRHU. It's an award winning station. Uh, she serves as the kind of coordinator and, and ex executive producer, working closely with students as the professional in residence in news and public affairs programming. Um, she's also a professor here that teaches in the radio program and in journal radio journalism in particular, and um, has a long career, a distinguished career in radio reporting and journalism um, that I've admired and, and followed for a long time. So I'm really happy to have Duali join us. Hi, hi Duali. Hi, uh, thank you um, for having us. Um, I just finished with the students who um, um, ended a news program for the afternoon. Um, it's our 30 minute news program. Of course, we led with, with the Turkey earthquake and um, Syria and the disaster happening there, which is of course huge. Um, again, as Madia was saying, uh, I am a longtime uh, public radio journalist. I've been doing radio for uh, more than two decades, uh, mostly with public radio, mostly with NPR. Um, and I currently still um, help out and anchor the hourly newscast um, at the top of the hour or the half hour, et cetera. And my role at WRHU is to make sure that our students are doing quality journalism, making sure that they are, um, you know, doing community journalism, making sure that they are um, getting, being inclusive and, and covering diverse communities and making sure that we are out there and, and getting as many, you know, uh, topics and voices on as as much as possible. So um, I'm doing sort of quality control, um, balance, inclusivity. Um, you know, uh, making sure that we're we're fact checking. You know, and that we're doing our deep research. And so um, happy to be here with all of you, and happy to answer some questions. So uh, the other thing that uh, Professor Sai Kowtow, they call her Professor X, uh, Duahli, uh, reporter, <laughs> journalist, uh, award-winning journalist that another role that she plays, she's also the coordinator, academic coordinator for our academic program in audio radio production, which 
probably going to change the, the overall title of the program. Uh, the, I mean, when we talk about digital audio, radio production, podcasting, we're talking about a lot of things. Uh, a lot has evolved. A lot has changed over the years. But in many ways, it's a lot of the same stuff that uh, Dwali and I have been doing for 30 years or so. Um, our courses, our program in the Herbert School of Communication, the radio program, which is housed in the radio, television, film department, but also has courses that are part of another department, the journalism department. Um, our, cor our courses essentially showcase what the audio radio medium is today, right? Uh, we have all sorts of production courses. Let's keep in mind, just thinking of audio, that all media depend on audio, television, film, radio. We could even stretch it even into music and into drama. So audio is an essential component of just about all the media. Uh, so that fundamental knowledge and, and skill set is important for all our students. And we have programming. We have courses related to just foundational production in audio. We also have pr uh, production focus in radio, what we traditionally would call as radio, which is which manifests itself in many ways, news and public affairs, long form narrative nonfiction. Uh, we also have radio drama, a course in radio drama, producing radio drama courses, uh, uh, pro projects. Um, we have um, uh, other production courses in audio that focus on sound design and more kind of complex sound design. Um, but I think the the area that we really try to embrace, Dwali and myself and other colleagues who teach in the program, is really radio as a medium that um, that can tell stories, right? Uh, and from from our standpoint, and I'll let Dwali take over here on this point. You know, too often we hear, "Oh, radio is a dead medium. Radio is dead. Nobody listens to the radio anymore." Um, and if you look at the numbers from Pew State of the Media annual surveys, when you look at the numbers, just looking at it in terms of market, it, nothing could be further from the truth. The radio medium is alive and strong, digital audio radio, uh, what, whatever you want to call it, podcasting, obviously they have different dimensions. It's, it's flourishing. And that's the first thing I try to tell students, like those who might be uh, uh, piping in today, to consider radio as a medium that has a lot of possibilities in terms of career options, um, because radio is not dead. If anything, it's flourishing and it's and it's multiplying in, in, in a number of ways, which I would I would throw it to uh, Professor X to kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Well, uh, you know, as as um, you know, Vice Dean uh, Murillo is saying, um, we are all storytellers, right? And that storyteller. Uh, in us, um, wherever we are, uh, comes through audibly. And the audible form means that there are all kinds of ways that that we can, um, all kinds of platforms that we can use. And that's 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 why we have all these creative outlets, right? Uh, within YouTube, within um, TikTok, within all these things, it's it's a through line of stories, short vignettes, and podcasting. Um, you know, packages, et cetera. So podcasts is a huge, huge landscape that is ever changing and ever growing. And it's, it's a powerful medium because you get to control when you listen and to what you're listening to and how much of it. And so the aim here is that you can create community radio, you can create ethnic radio, you can create all kinds of platforms for you. I mean, as many of us know, there are uh, platforms for extremist, you know, radio shows. And so uh, this is a medium that is is ever growing and we want to be able to create powerful, uh, fascinating and, and, and accurate um, storytelling of communities that haven't gotten the kind of coverage um, that historically have been sort of you know, lost in, in, in many ways. And so we are here to try to grow that and to try to expand that. And uh, that's why we're here with all of you tonight to kind of, um, you know, you know, help people understand where things are and what people can do at, at Hofstra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to go into the program, just for, again, this, I guess this is helpful for those students who might be considering Hofstra. And by the way, I should point out that we are more than open to welcome students who are interested in coming to visit, to visit the campus, to visit the School of Communication, which is very unique in terms of our, our facilities. 
state-of-the-art facilities in just about everything in film and video television and certainly in radio if you look at the equipment and the studios that we have in radio uh, so we encourage students to to come but just to give people an idea of what the program is like again the school the lawrence herbert school of communication has two departments one is the journalism media studies and public relations department and then there's the radio television film department the radio area happens to service both we're housed primarily in rtvf but we have program courses in journalism that are obviously are, are the, the, the bailiwick of what uh, Dwahli and I generally teach in the program. Um, the program is a Bachelor of Arts degree, which means for students who are kind of looking around at different universities, it means it's a full 36 credit program focused on digital audio production, radio, podcasting, etc. cetera. Um, we, we also take seriously the impact of radio culturally as an institution, as a as a, a, a medium that has had impact on many levels, culturally, politically, socially. So there's a component in our program that focuses on studying radio, understanding the history, the origins, how it has evolved technologically, economically, politically, culturally. Radio is not a medium that should be kind of pushed aside as not important. We have film studies courses where people study film. We have music courses where you study theory of music. We have television studies and media studies courses. And sometimes we tend to forget that radio is a medium that has had impact for set for literally over a century in this country. So we do have a, a component of it where we try to study. In fact, Professor Duahli is teaching right now the history of radio in this country. It's not a production course, it's for people to understand the role and the origins and the development of radio over over, over a long course of history. That's so right. Look, we're, yeah. we're looking at the evolution of radio, you know, the oldest um, media, um, you know, ever uh, to, to essentially recreate itself in this moment, right? Like what, it, what does it look like today? And so um, we'd love to answer any questions that you might have um, and see, yeah. see what we might be able to, to help people understand. Yeah, and then, yes, I just want to go through, and then there, there would, there's a whole set of production courses that students would be required to take. So along with a few studies courses, um, there's the production courses, different levels, and then there's some specific courses that focus on writing for radio, of course, is about announcing and how do we perform in radio. Be Feature reporting, um, yeah, investigative the, the reporting. Yeah, re, uh, the re reporting and the journalism courses, which are pretty intense. Um, and then there's, like I said, some of the advanced, uh, you know, design courses, sound design courses that go be even beyond uh, radio. Some of them are related to film and, and other audio production uh, aspects of it. Um, and yeah, it's again, it's a 36 credit major. And for, again, going through the nuts and bolts of academic of the academic program, students who are majoring in radio, in a, they would receive a Bachelor of Arts degree, and in order to receive the BA degree, they would also have to take a minor in a liberal arts discipline outside of the school. It could be music. A lot of students in radio take music as their minor, or they take uh, creative writing as a minor, or they take uh, art as a minor, um, or drama as a minor to supplement the work that they're doing in radio. But in order to fulfill your degree requirements, you have to do a Bachelor of Arts, liberal arts uh, minor degree program. Some students also double major. Uh, and then you have to take a whole slew of other university-wide courses, foreign language uh, requirements and things like that, that uh, we'd be happy to answer specific questions about related to the program. But, um, and then the other unique component of WR, of, of Hofstra's radio program is WRHU, the, the University Community Licensed Radio Station that is a bit, it's technically a, no, a non-curricular uh, program. It's a, essentially a club uh, that's university-wide, but it is very popular. Students who get involved at the station learn about programming. They learn about management. They learn about production, they learn about journalism, about reporting and writing. That's the role that uh, Dwali plays with the students. They do sports coverage and programming. So you learn in a classroom, you practice in the, in the radio station, uh, and that kind of is a great pathway towards the professional career in audio, radio, podcasting, uh, radio production. 
That's right. Um, the, the, the interesting thing about WRHU is that you have a lot of students who come to WRHU uh, not as journalism or, or, you know, audio majors. They are simply people who are part of the university community and they love audio in some form and they come and join because it's a club. And um, it's it's some people, in fact, work harder at the club than they do in some of their classes because it is such a, a community based experience that they are joining um, a group of like minded people who, for example, have a love of country music or they have a love of sports or they have a love of of tech. And so um, it's a place where people can experiment, where literally it's like the only class at, at Hofstra that is going to be for free. It's like a 10 week class where you learn all about radio and it's completely free for students. And it's all about just learning how to do radio learning how to be talent on air. And that's the program that, that's why I was a little tardy tonight because I was uh, talking, doing a D um, sort of a post-mortem with our news program about what went well, um, what could have been improved and tweaked a little bit um, when they were talking about the earthquake and talking about the UN response to it. Um, I, I reminded them that we had to say people's name correctly, for example. Um, we need to uh, make sure that we are, are naming people and and calling people as accurately as possible. And so um, this, again, this is one of those places where people can learn a great deal and, and not, you know, be graded in a sense. They're just, they're just, you know, community volunteers, literally. Mm -hmm. Now, another component of the program, again, as you, as you requested, you know, we wanted to give you a, a, a good sense of what the academic program entails. Another very important aspect is the internship possibilities that exist. Now, if students come to study radio at Hofstra, you don't have to. It's not a requirement that you take an internship, but it's sort of like a dumb thing not to, right? Why wouldn't you take advantage of the fact that we're living in probably the biggest media center in the world? If Well, certainly in the United States, but among the, around the world, you really can't get bigger than New York, really. And so we're in the, in the center of this space where radio happens. And when we talk about radio, we're talking about traditional AM and FM, terrestrial radio, um, satellite radio, right? So we talk about Sirius XM, which, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not the biggest, but it's pretty, pretty big. And there's a lot of uh, work being done there. We're talking about podcasting, which is really limitless right now. It just continues to grow in many different ways, some good, some bad, but generally podcasting is not going away. If anything, it's going to continue to grow. Uh, we're talking about subscription services like Spotify, Pandora, Deezer, uh, you know, other, other platforms in which music and other content is being distributed, SoundCloud. Um, and we're talking about streaming services, right, that, that are out there, uh, including what Duali said before, YouTube and others, Vimeo, all of which uh, radio plays a key component. So there's a lot of work possibilities out there. And our internship program links students to a lot of these different platforms and venues, if you will. Uh, and usually students by their junior year are doing at least one, if not two uh, internships by the time they graduate. The journalism program in Hofstra, you have to do an internship. That is a requirement in the degree. Uh, so all students in journalism, including radio journalism students, would get an intern, would have to do an internship. But I would say 98% of our students in the radio area get internships. We have, we've seen students at 1010 Wins, at uh, WCBS News Radio 880, at WNYC, the public radio station. We've had students uh, internship, do internships at NPR, at uh, uh, Sirius XM. I have, I have one student that graduated in May and in September he started working at Sirius XM. So those opportunities are, are, are really, you know, I don't want to say limitless, but certainly there's a lot of opportunities for students to consider that uh, in their career trajectory while they're here at Hofstra. I don't know if there's any questions or any other thoughts that you might have or concerns or regarding the program that might be useful for your uh, your audience. To um, come and visit um, mm -hmm. anytime. We, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, show, you know, um, show them around the studio and um, just you know, just put them behind a microphone. I, I would say that the um, radio program at Hofstra is probably one of the most 
comprehensive uh, developed programs probably in the country around digital audio production, radio production. Uh, so we're pretty proud of it. And hopefully we'll get some people, students interested in, in joining. Marine is joining. Should you admit her? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the application process? If there's any anything additional to the normal application process, any portfolios yeah. required? Yeah, I should have prepared that. I mean, on our website at hofstra.edu, um, and you go to admissions, you can find the application process, the application materials. Um, I can't, I should know this. I, I'm not sure what the, what the application fee is. Um, one thing that a lot of students ask when they're looking around for universities is, do you apply and get accepted to the Herbert School of Communication and the radio program, or do you do apply to the university? Hofstra has a, a standard practice of accepting you as a student to the university. Once you're in the university, you can uh, jump into and consider many different majors that are available, not only at the Herbert School, but at the College of Arts and Science, the Business School, the Engineering School, School of Nursing, all these other schools. Um, but you get accepted into the university, not into the Herbert School. Obviously, if you have background in audio production or radio in your high school, that's always a, that's always a plus and, and beneficial coming in. Could you talk a little bit about what sort of careers people have after they graduate? Sure. Um, I'm happy to talk about that. So a lot of our graduates, um, they have all kinds of passions and interests. Some people want to be sports journalists. They want to do play-by-play. -play. Some people want to do hard news. Some people simply want to be um, audio engineers, which basically just means that they are behind the scenes. They're the tech person. They're the people that push open the mics and push, you know, um, make sure that, you know, microphones are on, volumes are leveled. Um, they're mixers, they're people who make the sound and put the sound together. Um, the kinds of, of jobs that people are getting are very varied, you know, very diverse. You know, you've got the talent, um, the, the presenters, the host, the reporters, you've got the directors. So there's all kinds of really like wonderful opportunities um, that people are, are doing. But also we live in a very different world now where it's no longer just about, you know, the big networks. Um, it's about doing real community journalism and um, being enterprising and doing in-depth features that can, um, that are all, you know, audio versions of, of stories, documentaries, um, um, when I was, um, in fact, this week, uh, we have a pod, I have a, a, our team has a podcast coming out about food insecurity in Ukraine. And so I spent, um, a uh, little more than two, two and a half months in Ukraine over the summer, um, uh, traveled all over the country and brought back, uh, very, very central, um, interviews about food uh, food makers, you know, chefs, uh, truck drivers, cleaners, people who are living with and among displaced refugees and trying to figure out how to help them stay alive during wartime, how to feed them, how to keep people's spirits up. So there's, there's many, many kinds of um, ways in which people can make stories and, you know, podcasts, documentaries, just one form of that. So, you know, that's just an example of that. And many of our people also go on to just be producers and helping to get those people, um, you know, interviews and secure uh, all kinds of really um, interesting conversations in the world of, of audio. So again, we're, we're happy to uh, talk more about that. But um, I, you know, I would, I would really just to encourage your um, youth and, and those who come to the library to, to pay us a visit, to give us a call, let us know when people might be interested, maybe do like a group tour. But we can also help just answer questions. And once they see the studios and they come here, they can physically understand a little bit more about how it works and, and what, what it means to be behind the scenes and who the folks are and what kind of community is being built here at the university. Concretely, in terms of jobs, um, 
I, I, just a quick anecdote. I was in Washington, D.C. back in September, October for a conference, the Society for Professional Journalists, SPJ. And um, uh, we had a dinner. We went to dinner. I went to dinner with three alums of the Hofstra radio program. One graduated 20 years ago and is now the um, sports pr program director of Sirius XM. I remember getting him his first job at WCBS News Radio 880. Smart guy, brilliant, uh, very engaged, and he and he kind of uh, moved up, and now he's doing radio at Sirius XM. Uh, another student, former student, who is now the an executive producer for a show called uh, 1A. It's about the First Amendment and free speech. It's a public radio show that distributed by National Public Radio in Washington uh, from WETA, the FM uh, public radio station there. So he's now working there and he graduated about 10 years ago. And another student who just graduated in May, who's working uh, at the Knight Foundation and doing reporting there with the Knight Foundation, also a radio, a radio student. Um, among those, that group of students, for example, the first one I mentioned, he's he helped land another student who graduated in May another job at Sirius XM. So there's a uh, alumni uh, network of students, former students who are out there uh, doing, as Dwali pointed out, a range of kind of jobs. A lot of students also who started radio, they move into other media, not only radio, but they're doing video, they're doing television, they're doing other, you see a lot of former WRHU students doing television news and news reporting. So the opportunities are out there. There's no question about it. Um, for the students who who who, do, who come here, I'm going to put my email on for for anybody uh, who any students who might see this, see this later on, or um, you sh you're sharing. I know you're sharing it. This is my email address. Um, feel free to reach out to me again. I'm a professor here, but I'm the vice dean of the Herbert School. So any questions, I can direct you to the right person. Uh, at the university who can help you answer those, especially for those who are, and their parents, students and parents who are looking for more information. I'll give you the last word. Um, you know, I think that those of us who are in this business, um, we fell in love with this a long time ago, you know, for whatever reason, some sound, something brought, you know, sort of, sort of, like stayed with us. And to me, it's all about characters, right? Um, the world of audio is, is closing your eyes and imagining and listening and building a relationship with, with sounds around you. And that's, that's what I love about this medium is that you can find yourself in the right storytelling atmosphere. You can go somewhere and listen to something and the people who are, are are presenting are taking you somewhere. And that's the power of this medium. And I just, I love teaching it. I love showing people how we can um, capture authentic, true voices. And I love building stories. And so um, hopefully your students um, who might be interested in this um, will be able to tap into that and figure out how they can build their own storytelling archive and start like telling stories as simple as just, you know, a little profile of a grandparent, a profile of a teacher, a profile of their best friend, um, something that happened on the playground, something that happened in the summer, something simple that students can grab a hold on to and just begin to sort of tell that story. And um, eventually, you know, you get to an age where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm like, I've been able to tell such powerful, beautiful stories. And that's what we're all here for. We're here to help um, young people get to that point where they can become confident in building those stories and saying like, I heard this, did you do this? You know, let me take you somewhere. Like, um, I've been to Nepal. I can tell you what the, the Nepalese um, community is like in this city, in this village, in this place. I can bring you the colors. I can talk about Thailand. I can talk about Indonesia. I can bring you to all these spots. I can bring you to Texas and California and Seattle. And so 
Um, I love this medium and I know that Mario um, has done all kinds of work in South America and other places. And um, we just we really believe in this work and in, in creating that next generation of reporters and journalists and storytellers. So uh, please contact us and, and send your students to us. We're happy to, you know, share our world with you. Absolutely. I just put up the Hofstra.edu admission office link. So again, for those who will be seeing this later, hopefully they'll take advantage of that. And my email again is right there for any further information. So we really appreciate you giving us a space and hopefully uh, some students from that that uh, visit the Levittown Public Library will, will have an interest in what we do in the radio program here at Hofstra. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. This has been great. It's really informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have them ask for, you know, Dean um, Murillo and Professor X. <laughs> well. Thanks so much. Good night.